Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. Me hearties, and welcome once again to Full Stream Ahead. I be your captain, Charlie, the Professor Esser. And with me, as always, is me first mate and skinny rich friend. It's Maz. Hey, Maz. In a world of capes and lunatics, gods and monsters, in a galaxy far, far away, there are those who must do what they must to ensure protection of what they love. There are Mandalorians, and this is the book of Boba Fett. Uh, tonight's episode, Stranger in a Strange Land, Boba Fett Holds Court. Our director is the great Robert Rodriguez. Uh, writers on this, we got uh, Jean Favreau. Uh, George Lucas is getting that created by, uh, or that based on Star Wars by credit. Um, Noah Clore is our hardest working man in show business tonight, our staff writer. Let's see if anyone else gets a credit in this. Uh, uh, George Lucas, Noah Clore, just John Favreau and John Favreau. He gets that created by and that written by, uh, along with uh, that George. Well, I mean, George Lucas is only getting a base on by now. You know, you can see the difference between film and comic books, because in the comic books, they tell you who done. Who, they, they tell you who uh, who actually created the character. You know, mm. it's like because arguably, you know, Boba Fett. There, but you know, that's I guess that's the idea is that there's like a dozen people who created Boba Fett aside from George Lucas, mm. uh, and they are the writers of Empire. Obviously, they are the uh, writer. They are the artists who worked on uh, the holiday special. They're the artists who had created the character even before then and uh, did the drawings. And, you know, there's a lot of people who contributed to the Boba Fett uh, legend before we mm. get here. But here we are in the book of Boba Fett. And um, it's actually been a week since I watched this. Uh, I did not get a ch- chance to watch it again before we were recording it. But uh, Tristan says it starts off in the, it's, it's called the Bacta. Yeah, Bacta. The back to chamber, which is the healing chamber. Ah, right, 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 right. Yeah, which makes me wonder, like, what is he healing from? I, I guess just just everything, just everything right. he's healing from. Right. It seems like he needs to make pretty. I mean, they made it seem like after his encounter with the ambush party, he was pretty significantly injured. Um, yeah, and it seems like a routine occurrence to him. So he probably has to go back there like every day. Yeah, he probably is always in the back to chamber. You know, yeah, just just putting everything back together yeah, again. Could, you know, it could be because since he was in the sauce, we don't know how long he was in war, but since he was in bed for a few hours or maybe a day, so he's probably healing from the sauce and the sarlacc. So you're That's- thinking he still has long lasting weaknesses from his time in the sarlacc. <laughs> Yeah, and that is true. Well, he did, yeah, because he does pass out when he get because we do get in this the harrowing escape from the Sarlacc, mm. and he he killed that Sarlacc man. That oh Sarlacc, yeah, that you, you, Sarlacc. you see it laying like lifeless behind him. Because yeah, because yeah, he's he's not crawling out through the mouth. He's crawling no. out through the side. He's yeah. just like nope, give me a hole. Yep, I don't care if the Sarlacc has lived here a thousand years. It's dead now. 
I will burn this Sarlacc to the ground. It's the last bit of heartburn it will ever have. Yeah, well, don't eat a Mandalorian. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. what, Tristan? Yeah. Instead of it being a stormtrooper, he actually finds a Rodian. Oh. He has to fight for some reason because apparently it still has its blaster and actually shot him. So the Rodian inside the Sarlacc fights him? Yeah. Well, see, that's just a weird idea. Why are you two people fighting inside a Sarlacc? I mean. So, um, there was also a droid in there. A droid? Well, the droid's like. You find yourself in a Sarlacc stomach. And you see a mortal enemy. I mean... You work together. Didn't you ever see Enemy Mine? Come on. That's like <laughs> classic sci-fi rules. I agree. The enemy of my enemy is my friend when there's a giant monster. Right. Premise of King Kong that we never got to see. Kong of Skull Island. And like the best mo- movie ever made was like two scenes in it. It's <laughs> so annoying. I want to see those guys' life in that adventure. On Skull Island, you know, the American and the Japanese soldiers, they go mm. through that, you know. But uh, anyway, that's a whole other set of films. Also with Samuel L. Jackson, although Samuel L. Jackson is not in this, but he is in Star Wars. So getting back to this thing. Um, he is the one that, th- that chops off Django's head, right? In that scene where he walks oh, up yeah, on yeah, his helmet. Yeah. So. And we, we do get our references in that there, too, you know. Um, and actually, people have pointed out uh, that his head is not in that helmet. That if you actually watch it, that in the actual thing, the head gets chopped off, the head does fly out. There's a shadow of the head flying out yeah. separate from the shadow of the helmet yes. flying through the air. And you do see that. Yeah, you do. See, but so that is just him picking up the helmet. Yeah. Although, again, I guess I, 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 it's weird no matter how you slice it. Like, I don't know. Do you pick up the head? Do you pick up the helmet? What do you do with your father's remains? It's. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not sure if it's canon, but it was in a comic. Where apparently, he actually, his tribe of Mandalorians did kind of have the green and red that Boba had, but once his armor was stolen, so that person polished it up and gave it the silver and blue, and he just kept that. Ah, okay. What, what, did, what did Toxin Gamer 13 say? So apparently, well, I guess this is like whether or not why Boba is sometimes uh, depicted with. Silver and blue armor, and sometimes with red and green armor. Oh. Apparently, the original group of Mandalorians who adopted Boba as a foundling. Django. Uh, oh, Django. Sorry. Oh, Django. So Django had his armor stolen? Yeah, in the comics. Oh, okay. I guess in the comics, Django had his armor stolen. Someone painted over the red and green and made it the silver and blue. But then it's interesting that maybe Boba goes back to the red and green, sort of that tradition of the Mandalorians, even though he is not a Mandalorian. So it's layers upon layers upon layers. And, the, you know, in comic books, they always try to explain things in certain ways that don't always make sense. But that's okay, because that's what comic books are for. Um, we are, uh, we go, um, so we have these two parallel stories. One is Flashing back on Django's life in the Sarlacc pit, in in uh, what was the what the cloning place? Um, and uh, uh, interesting thing. This is actually something I found very interesting. Is the actor who played young Boba Fett actually plays young young Boba Fett in the Clone Wars series? Huh. In the same way that uh, the guy who plays old Boba Fett plays. Uh, Boba Fett in the Clone Wars series as well. So, who played Jango Fett plays Boba Fett. So, it, I, I love how how they're reusing all of the actors in that nice way and yeah. really giving themselves a legacy to build out from. Um, but uh, I did feel this episode is a little short, a little short, a little straightforward. I mean, they did give us a little bit of fan service about how Boba escaped from the Sarlacc, but. Yeah. I thought it was really straightforward. Uh, there was very little. Well, I mean, I guess you can't have too much nuance with characters that don't really speak. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm talking yeah. about the Jawas and and uh, Boba Fett, but it just seemed like that formulaic process. You know, uh, a stranger comes into a strange land. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, is is disrespected by the tribe or not treated well by them until he saves them by killing a monster that's been bothering them. It's like every D and D adventure you've ever gone on. You know. 
Yeah, well, you know, I, and I, 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 I hear what you're saying on that, and I don't disagree with it, but I do feel like there's there's interesting levels to this, especially with the Jawas, who, you know, it's an interesting question about the Jawas and their scavenger culture. And this is one of these things I always come back to when you look at cultures like the Ferengi or even like the Klingons or, or like the Vulcans, where they have these kind of these weird obsessions about certain things. And I get the feeling that there's this idea of the Jawas of being scavengers and this idea that if something is there, you have to take it because otherwise it is wasted material and we can use that material later. And I think you get this opposite take on the Tuscans, whereas the Tuscans are maybe more like the Fremen in Dune where it's not about those materials that, that we're taking. It's about this human life. And, you know, we're going to make sure it's alive because we need more people. And even though we're going to be keeping him in this spot until he can understand our ways and what we need him for, we're, you know, and it, it, like I said, it's a very weird way that the relationship interacts. My thought and, was that they were keeping him for some utilitarian purpose that was a bit more nefarious maybe like bait for the six-armed creature you know if i mean we, you know if yeah. we need to go out and get this we can like shake the sand and draw the six-armed creature out it'll be occupied with eating this guy and we can go collect whatever resource that we need to from you know the mountain or whatever yeah i'm 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 more inclined to think he's just a basic slave you know he's just a slave class character he is meant there to be you know and hey to be fair you know conan's been a slave too Hmm. It usually ends poorly uh, for those who enslave him. But in this case, it worked out well for Django, especially because... Boba. Oh, but Boba. Because he is playing a bit more of a long game, I suppose. Because, you know, that's the thing. It's like when he says to the Rodian, when the Rodian balks at trying to make a run across the desert, because it is a desert full of sarlax and sand dune you know dune dragons and whatever the heck this six arm hairy housing beast is which by the way i love that beast because it did look like something hairy housing would design mm. i mean it looked like a hairy housing design i mean it moves beautifully but also it's like you could almost see it. you could imagine that creature being in something that ray hairy housing designed and i love anytime they bring back that aesthetic in these works, it really uh, feeds to it. But uh, yeah, I absolutely feel like it was intended to be a an issue with him building his status up in, in, in this in this society. Like he knows, he, and it's sort of like Gladiator. You know, he knows he's been taken as a slave, and he knows there's not much he can do on this except to find his way through. I mean, he did try to escape. It's not like you know. No, 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 he did try to escape when he could, you know, but, uh, you know, that, that failed and he had to make right. his other plans. And then he made other plans. He improvised. That's the thing. Right. It's like, you know, he was able to realize, okay, this is the dynamic. I'm basically, the, here's the chief's son who is, you know, who is like on his way to become a man. And he's got to sort of show that he can handle these two slaves. Right. And, you know, and again, he knows he's, you know, even though Jingo, I'm sure, thinks he could survive if he could just get out of here. But you know? he, he, he has the, the possibility here of mm -hmm. some semblance of a homestead, right? He can have a community and then he can figure out sort of where he wants to go or what he wants to do. But mm -hmm. right now he has the possibility of ingratiating himself with a group of people that seem to have some power over the landscape uh, in which he finds himself. And to be fair, if you really think about it, this takes place. Not that long after Return of the Jedi. Like, mm. as you break it down, because, of course, um, The Mandalorian pretty much takes place, you know, what, a few years after Return of the Jedi, after the fall of the Empire, after the building of the New Republic. So this is all still in this gray area. So how long he's in the desert with the Sand People, building himself, and for what it's worth, learning their ways and raising in rank to where he's got the... The, the spiky stick now too, you know, um, which, you know, I've heard people point out that, you know, when he, he starts, he's got the kid stick, but we know by the end of it, he's going to have the, he's going to have the boss stick. Right. Um, 
I did not. I mean, I guess that was early in his career. I didn't like seeing him get beat up by that Tuscan with mm. the stick so easily. I equally didn't like how easily he was almost bested by like five guys with shields. Like he's never well, encountered shields before. Like the 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 Boba Fett that we encountered in the Mandalorian would never get bested by himself. Those five of them would all be dead before they knew what happened. And here he just seems so ineffectual and just so like. Uh, well, and to be fair, he's just gone through a lot of fights, you know. And I think that. Yeah, and but but, but the Mandalorian what... happens bef- after this, right? Or before? Th- no, no, this no. Was, the Mandalorian this happens before after. this. Right, right, this is and, after but, the Mandalorian. So he was, a, 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 you know, a, a, a real BA, in, 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 and now he's just like this old man? Well, I think that is why we're seeing him sleeping in the back team. Back yeah, I mean, things. there must be more. I was very surprised in the end credits when I said it was written by John Favreau. I was like, man, that's, I, I expected something more nuanced and yeah. more clever from Favreau. But maybe maybe it is, and it, it's, it's going to open up and expose... Yeah, and I- and I also think that there's a part of this which is that Boba doesn't want to be... Boba is trying to take over this... I mean, the idea is is that this is Boba trying to rise in the criminal empire of Tatooine. He's trying to take Jabba's place, which is already... You know, that basically, after Jabba's death... Right, right, but, know, but does, uh, is the implication that he was holding back? Well, that he... Well, that he's trying to assess who's attacking him. Because we can even see when he um, is telling Fen, I, you can't kill them all. We need to save one. Mm. You know, because it's like Boba's trying to plot this out. Fennec's just like, these people attacked you. We kill them. <sighs> but at the same time, Fennec is like, we need to throw the the two, and I forget what they call the, uh, you know, obviously the orc uh, soldiers. The two bebops. Yeah. You know, two <laughs> bebops, yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know that you know they should be thrown to the menagerie, but Boba is like, no, you were loyal to your former boss. Will you be loyal to me? I can if use you'll that. Give me that loyalty, yeah, I can use that. And he spares them. And sure enough, because that was actually one of the things I said when to Tristan is is they're walking out of the casino, and you see the two orcs aren't with him. And it's like they know something. They're circling around because mm. they're going to come in from behind and. You know, because they, cause they're watching, they're protecting their guy, you know, and Boba's not, you know, he's a little off it, man, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's gone through a lot. He's gone through a lot in this very short period of time, and now he's got to sort of figure it out. And um, I found it interesting that the mayor is like, no, you, you give tribute to me, you know? That was great. And his emissary, man, what a, what a great actor that guy was. Oh, man, oh, he yeah. played it with all the... The, the subtle innuendo of, oh, you're going to die, but with, like, the nicest political face on it. Oh, oh yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I love that guy. Or to me, more to his point is you you will die if you try to push this. Yeah. Because, understand, I'm the mayor. I, I, I represent the mayor. The mayor is online with the New Republic and was probably online with the Empire, too. Mm. So the mayor has probably been threading this needle since the days of Jabba. Right, and he's been really, waiting for. He's like, let me see if I can assert some control. Now that he's gone, it's a whole yeah. new world. I can. Well, probably the, the mayor asserted his control after Bib. That basically, once Bib took over, no one's going to respect Bib the way they did Jabba. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So the mayor has been built. So the mayor has basically built his little machine. Hmm. You mm. know, his little political machine. In- I, I want to see who they're going to get to play the mayor because it, it should be it should be interesting. Well, actually, I think the mayor is the uh, hammerhead alien that we saw. Oh. I think. That's just my guess. I haven't like, looked into it yet, but for some reason, I get the feeling like the, the hammerhead mayor, that's that the hammerhead uh, alien, that's the mayor. I, ca- I kind of dug that they, they, they kept that from us for a little bit. I think they're building that, like, who's this going to be? Yeah. Well, exa- you know, and I really like, I mean, it's just, it's really neat how they built this up, I think. I think that, the, you know, for a short, and it kind of felt, it's a way it kind of felt like the same thing I felt with Hawkeye, which I kind of felt like chopping it up in this way in the 30-minute segments. Hmm. I mean, it definitely leaves you wanting more, but I feel like it's, like, too short for what you need it to be. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I would have liked it if it had been a little bit more, a little stronger, a little more together, and maybe give me that hour episode here. Because that's right. the thing with streaming is I can stop at any time. Right. 
you know, but I guess maybe they also figure, you know, a lot of people maybe are going to look at an hour episode and say, well, I don't have time to watch an hour episode. Hmm. But if I do, because that's the thing. It's like if I had started watching today, I'd watch two episodes. Yeah. You know, and then I watch those two episodes for that hour and like, oh, that was great. But if I need to stop at one, I can stop at one, you know. Yeah. And that's sort of the advantage of that binging model is like, you know, <laughs> once it's there, you can watch however many or however few as you want. At least that's one theory. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I, yeah. What else did we get in this? Was, was there any other pivotal plot point that we're missing? I mean, I don't really think so. I mean, really, it's, it's, I mean, we get a Wookiee pelt, so that's mm. disturbing. But, you know, th- this is this world, man. They, they yeah. eat sentient creatures all the time. So Mando still exists in this world, right? And, yeah, and- Mando's still out there. Mando just dropped off Grogu. This point, because I don't think Bobo went with them to fight in the last one, did he, or did he? I can't remember. I can't I remember how remember. the last battle where we got Luke Skywalker into it at the end. Um, oh no, yeah, I, I I think he was there. He was there. Okay, so, so then he went. Yeah, because at the end he goes back to Tatooine with with Fennec. Right, right, and that's when, right. That's right. when we get our teaser for book. Yeah, when he kills Bib Fortuna. Um, and hmm. uh, you know, and again, like I said, I get the feeling like. The underworld in Tatooine has kind of gone gone to pot after after Jabba's death, because mm-hmm. we even see when when they do fight the six armed monster, there's a, some completely other random gang mm. just muscling in on Jabba's turf. Now that Jabba's gone, no, no, but that was way in the past. Oh, yeah, I guess it was still Jabba. No, that turf wasn't. That, that was just after Jabba died. Uh, 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 so uh, that's uh, the uh, idea. Uh, you know, that's that basically Jabba's dead. It's chaos now. Mm. You know, like I said, that's why I say like it's not been that many years. Right. So, so we're probably going to see a more advanced version of that gang be a lot stronger and have a lot more membership by the time we meet them in the present. Maybe that's who he's fighting at the end. Maybe mm. that's who. Maybe that's who the mayor's got is his people because I'm mm. certain that was the mayor's people, and that's why he said right, the same right, right, one because right, right. I need to know who did this, mm. who's stepping to Boba. So I know how I need to address this. Because I get the feeling it's going to be, you know, you're going to get a nice meeting of the five families yeah. under Boba, you know. And for what it's worth, Boba, he doesn't have a lot going for him aside from being a real BA. And, you know, like you said, maybe people are a little unsure how much of a BA he is right now. Which would have been the moment to, like, lay the smack down when he was challenged in a public setting. Let everybody know, you know. Or it's the moment to let people know, I don't I, want to fight. Ugh. Yeah, I, of course you said. But I'm just going to say, <laughs> let them fight! Let them fight! Um, I mean, but like, uh, this is the underworld we're talking about. They don't respect hugs and, you know, and, and you know, greetings. Well, but Boba wants to, Boba wants a different kind of underworld. Uh, and they say it in the teasers. He wants a world built on respect. That I don't, you know, and that's that's the idea. And this is this is the Charlemagne model. You know, Charlemagne. You know, and this is also what Attila the Hun did. Mm. You know, it was being a you be a king in the saddle. You don't take a lot of loot for yourself. You make sure everyone gets a taste. Right, but the only way you can enforce that is by letting everybody know. Hey, don't mess with me. Well, not necessarily. You just get enough people who say, I'd rather have a taste than have to fight. And if you get enough people that just say, no, you're not going to stand up to Boba Fett because that's the thing. You're not going to stand up to Boba Fett. That's what you've got to build. That's at the heart of how you control the situation. I know. And there's, you know, so it's, you know, there's different ways you get control of people. There's, right, right. But, 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 but we're talking about like uh, a democracy where everybody shares resources versus human nature, which is gimme, gimme, gimme. You well, know, no, and- no, no, no. It's about it's about it's about an, oligarch- an oligarchy, which is we can all have more if we don't fight so much. Right. But, if but, we, if we, if but we can- that's that, that's a falsity. I mean, like for people that are trying to gain control. There's never enough to go around, right? And if everybody's getting an equal pe- equal piece, that means I'm not getting my equal piece. I think that emotion is is such an ingrained part of humanity that it, it's a hard thing to fight uh, without guess, a, a measure of a hard hand. You know, I guess the argument is is that 
And his, like I said, historically, the guy who shares with his with his with his people buys loyalty. Right, but he's also the guy that gets stabbed in the back. No, not necessarily. I told the Hun didn't get stabbed, stabbed in the back. Charlemagne didn't get stabbed in the back. They rode out. They did what they had to do. They maintained mm-hmm. their empires. Even Alexander the Great didn't get stabbed in the back. Yeah, but again, what was Alexander he known for? What was he known for? He was Alexander known for military campaigns and conquering. He was known yes. for strength. He was known, you know. Actually, no. He was known for building an empire that lasts expressly because he would take local people and put them in charge. And he would work with them and say, I don't need a lot. I just need you to be there. I need you to have my back the next time I conquer someone else. And you get to be in charge, and we're going to defend you. We're going to have a mutual defense treaty. And, you know, I get to go out and conquer everyone. And that's the thing. Either that or the other perspective to look at is like, hey, I'm going to conscript your men and uh, a fighting age whenever I need. Or you all die right now, okay? All right, keep well, living. No, or whatever. I mean, well, no. But when but I come the, see, to take all is, your the men thing is, of, Maj, of fighting you can't age, do that unless you already have an army capable of doing that. And every time that's you, my point. That's well, no, the but the show thing is, is, every time you, every time you make that choice to fight, you weaken your own stance. Because it's it's sort of like so it's like with wolves, right? But he's starting at, at zero with just Fennec and the two uh, Bebops. You know, and he's you know what? collecting and his army. And, and what I'm going to tell you is they're pretty capable just True. before them. True. And that's sort of where they're at. It's like, you know, again, like I said, he's holding back expressly because he doesn't just want to kill all these guys because someone's attacking him for a reason. Yeah, I just he that, that, just want to know. He doesn't just want them dead. The fact that he had to go running and crawling back into the the back to pit to heal himself uh, shows me that it wasn't some grand plan. That he was just bested, and and I don't like the way that makes me feel. Well, like I said, I get the feeling he's always in the back to. And if you and he's going to tell you, it makes sense if you're a guy who fights for a living mm. every night to sleep in the back to. Mm. Like I'm sure there's a back to a back to thing on slave one you know that you 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 just that this is your life and your muscles are always getting beat up and 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 weakened and the only way you maintain that level is you go in every night i get you it just seems like a strange thing to me. it seems like an easy choice to make uh, a lazy choice to make to say oh okay we're just going to make them look weak so that we have a place to start from so the show can build to something I mean, I guess so. I but mean, you're like, inheriting guess- the history of the last show we just saw, which is supposedly just, you know, a, a couple of weeks before the happenings uh, of this show. And all of a sudden, he's a different character. It seems a little, I, I don't, I, I I hope they give us a good reason. I hope they give me a and good you reason. Make it, and you may get some in the next episode. We may find out that, uh, you know, some of those drinks he was given at the uh, right, place where right. he gave him all the money had a little something, something in them. You know, then I, then it would make sense to me. Then I would be like, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, but you know, it, we'll, we'll see exactly what happens. Mm-hmm. And but you know, like I said, I mean, I, hey, I, I love everything, so I'm I'm a, a really easy guy. I felt it was beautifully directed. I think that the sets look beautiful. I think that uh, the acting is is fantastic. The story, like I said, I thought it was rushed. I thought we didn't mm-hmm. get enough of what we needed. Mm-hmm. I think we could have done more of an establishing. You know, I, honestly, I actually think we got to the fight because people felt we need more fights. Right, right. That people are coming to this for the fights, not coming to this for, you know, the the prolonged parliamentary, parliamentary uh, negotiations. I guess. They want to see someone get punched. They want someone to get shot with a laser beam. You know, that's where we're at with this. And the fact of the matter was is that, you know, they – they needed to get these fights in there. And the only way to get mm. the fights in there is you can go back in time and show Boba getting beaten up by sand people because he just crawled out of a Sarlacc mm. with no back to tank. Um, or mm. you can have him have to deal with this, get, get, deal with an ambush. And with only, and, and for what it's worth, it's him and Fennec against, what was it, six guys, you know, with shields that he does not have. And, you know, and they're not hurting him, but the fact of the matter is, is, you know, he, he has, he has, he has to find his entryway to attack them. He's, he's not a heavy, he's not a heavy machine gunner. 
This isn't John Favreau's Mandalorian with the heavy machine gun. Just <laughs> he is but, he, right. a much more subtle bounty hunter. He's more used to more quick fights in a more open area, and they've got him closed in. I guess. I mean, there's all these kind of ways you can look at it where, you know, it's a different kind of fighting when you have more space. Yeah, it just seems like if in the public square, I'm a bad guy. I see the guy trying to assert control, get beat up by five, like, foot soldiers. I'm like, get, get out of here. I'm not, I don't have to pay this well, guy. But he doesn't get He's going to protect he, me. He's going to protect my business. But he doesn't get beat up. They all he get beat up. He does get beat up. He goes after them and he, he gets and beat he, up he until he gets them. saved and the tie gets turned and, and they're just foot soldiers. They're just goons. They have wives and kids. You know, they're like, ah, I'm out of here. Well, I, no, I, did I, mean, my job. That, I mean, that's, I mean, that's the question. Is he getting beat up or is he, or is he doing a rope a dope? He's assessing what they got. Cause right now, if they're coming at him with shields, no, the idea of a rope a dope is you pretend to be hurt. You don't actually get hurt. Well, except you can't. Well, see, that's the thing. You can't actually pretend, pretend to get hurt. It's, it's like every time you get punched, even if you're wrong with the punch, that hits. That's still a heart. That, that still hurts. You may be able to take it. You may be able to roll with the punch, but it looks like you're getting beat up. But at the same time, it's about you know getting past it and getting to the next thing. I guess. You know, and I do think that, like I said, I'm 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 going to give him yeah the, the benefit of a doubt that there's a strategy to this, and that he's not just completely out of his element. But maybe he is. Because Fennec Shand definitely thinks he's out of his element. Right. Because Fennec Shand is, no, you kill them. You just kill them. Yeah. Uh, and you he don't. needs that. He go, By God, he needs that. And to be fair, maybe that's the dichotomy that they're working with. Good cop, bad cop, hot, running hot and cold, mm. and figuring out what's the real best way to approach this. Mm. Any final thoughts on tonight's episode, Mozzie? I, I think what I'm looking forward to, I, I what I foresee is that it's gonna he's gonna collect like a ragtag group of of uh, um, supporters and quote unquote family, and and that's what I'm looking forward to, like the what characters are gonna join his band of travelers. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're gonna. I mean, I think definitely we're gonna get a lot more characters. Yeah, I think we're gonna get a lot more to everyone. I'm actually hoping that we're gonna get like some kind of story with the orcs you know that we're actually going to get some of what those people's culture is mm. you know i want to see him like go back and call in some chits from the sand people you know maybe even pull in some stuff from the jawas just yeah. see some stuff where there's like there, there's this real understanding of the interactions between everybody i mean i hope we at some point meet the sheriff again from mm. that one town that had was it armor. Cobb Vance? Vance Refrigeration? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's... I would love to see that. I would love to see some just callbacks and what we get. It would yeah. be awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I, I can see the ex the story being explored, like, uh, similar again to Dune, about how the new people that have taken over the desert have been mistreating the desert people, not treating them like the civilized people that live in their cities. And that will be the desert power that that uh, Boba needs to overtake the uh, the evil, con you know, conquerors. Yeah, I mean, the mayor. I, can, I can absolutely see that as, as a reality. Uh, all right, now. Um, so for those who don't know, this is this broadcast to uh, Hot on the Capes and Lunatics Network. And we here at Capes and Lunatics, we love you guys. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love it if you emailed us at capesandlunatics at gmail.com. That's capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Uh, and call us and leave us a voicemail, and we will play it on the air with your thoughts on the book of Boba Fett or any of the things that go on in any of other shows at 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And you can go to linktree slash capesandlunatics. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot e e slash capes and lunatics to connect to all of our merch, our Patreon account, where we have uh, topless movie reviews and all sorts of other extra content for those who wish to to uh, pay for it. And coming up soon, a round robin, if you will, of discussion on the worst superhero film ever made. Mm. Will it be fan Forstastic? Will it be Steel? Will it be Puma Man? They're all in the running. I would rather watch all of those than Batman versus Superman. Ooh. Strong words from you, my friend. Strong words. 
uh, you may have to come in and do a little <laughs> test on us. But yes, that's L I N K T R dot E E, the left to upper right uh, slash Capes and Lunatics for that. And then, if anyone has anything to tell you specifically about Maz, mm. just want to talk to you, nobody else in private, how can they find you? Oh, they can email me at mazmanzor at gmail.com or find me on Facebook under Maz Manzor. That's M A N M O Z M A N Z O R. Very good. And of course, you can always write to me in that old fashioned email, whether whether mothers and fathers once did, at uh, superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And of course, follow me on Twitter as I live tweet things when I feel like it. And there's something new on, which happens occasionally in this world of streaming. There's mm. still some newly broadcast stuff at Charlie Esser. That's C H A R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's right there in the middle. For what? For quality. Bing! Thank you, Maz. Mm. All right, me hearties, you've sailed the seven seas, the dune seas of Tatooine, and come back out the other end of the Sarlacc. And we wish you come back again next week as we once again sail full stream ahead. Arr.